Ooh, that's good. Hey everybody, Josh the RV Nerd from Bishes RV out here in Kalispell, Montana. Again, or still, depending on your perspective, getting some footage of the 321BH Transcend. And this is a smart bunkhouse. Once again, Transcend's originality really shines through. What they did here is they sort of, they started with, I think, the concept of, you know those two slide bunkhouses where it's a slide out in the back room and then a living room and the, the TV's right at the end of the, the, the front bed and the entertainment sucks. They took that and they said, what if instead of having garbage entertainment center, we, we twisted it around with a, a, a living room that we know really works and offers a ton of storage that a lot of bunkhouses can kind of struggle with. Um, and then they, they cranked it up another notch by giving it a true queen bed and then they kept going by making it a bath and a half model so that if you have a camper, you know, that sleeps two or three people, one bathroom, is fine. When you start sleeping six, seven, eight, nine, ten people, a bath and a half starts to become one of your best friends and it will, uh, in effect, increase your gray water capacity because now you're adding a whole second gray tank to this. But the way that they did it, they they, they took the second slide out of the RV essentially and they wrapped an L bunkhouse around the half bath, which sounds nuts, but it works. It works so well. And the cool thing about L bunks is not everybody has little kids. Some people have camping teenagers or they have adult families that camp with them. L bunks can fit bigger people because you've basically got an eight foot long bunk across the back of this thing. Not to mention you can, uh, you know, have a hide bed potentially in the living room and all kinds of other stuff. And having a bath and a half means that that walk through bathroom toward the front bedroom isn't so much of a hiccup or hang up that some people get kind of hung up on. You know, hiccup or hang up that you get hung up on? Yeah. Yeah, that's like the time in London and England. Well, this was going good till right about now. Anyway, I'm gonna show you where she shines and I'm gonna show you where she doesn't. I'd love to hear from you. What do you think of this one? Where did they nail it and where did they fail it? Now, usually when you see a living room like this, it tends to have some sort of open corner bunk back there by the door. That's one of the major differentiating qualities of this RV is that it has a private rear bunk room back there. But as a result, that means that they couldn't have the normal full bathroom. So that kind of got moved up to the bedroom area at the front of the RV, which is where we're standing right now. I'm actually standing in the bathroom uh, recording this, looking toward the back of the RV just to help you get your bearings. I, I like that skylight and vent combo up there because this is only six and a half foot tall inside. So anything that just kind of lightens and brightens and opens it up, I'm sort of a fan of. I haven't peeked up here, but it is a power vent fan. You won't find any of the big XL vent fans in this RV. So if that's something that you're really looking for, you're uh, going to have to plan on doing some uh, updating, upgrading there. It is a TCL Roku TV, by the way. And although the TV's mounted up a little high, it is nice that it is more of a direct facing entertainment center because that's something that a lot of bunkhouses um, historically have often lacked. Although that is getting better in the RV marketplace, historically uh, bunk models always had 90 degree neck wrecker entertainment centers and um, it wasn't until recently that that began changing. Now you've got some nice big windows there but the RV does lack windows on the campsite and I hope you appreciate I've almost been rattling off more things that are points of concern than awesome factors on the RV so far but trust me there's plenty of that coming. I just want to be fair. I want you to know what you're getting into here. Now that was a trifold sleeper sofa. I do believe you could get yourself a theater seat in this if you were so inclined and considering how much dedicated fixed sleeping we already have I think that's probably the way I would go but I've got a three-person family I don't need all that extra sleeping if you do well that might be awful helpful now there's that pocket behind the TV and I and I do like that clutter cutter shoe garage right by the door but the pocket behind the TV like you can see a couple coat hooks right here and I like that they're not using scrap like everything is purpose made for what they're doing here a one two three octopus fight club um what would you do with this though like there's no shelving there is just a big open pocket what would you uh, uh equip in that area now you might have noticed the lights kick on i realized i had the uh motion light by the door turned off and when you first turn it on it has to go through like a startup cycle so now it's flashing at you hopefully that wasn't too awful offensive uh i think i mentioned it but the tv is up a little yeah i mentioned that the tv's up a little bit high now um central air conditioner back here is standard what's cool is in the rear bunk room there's actually a power vent fan 
but these are 50 amp and second air capable. You'll see a second air conditioner installed up in the bedroom, non-centralized, but you know, second air. And with the main AC back here, if you open up the uh, cold air dump to drop most of the air back here, then you have a second air in the, the front area. You should be pretty good in those hot climates. Now you may have noticed the forward facing slide side has a window, but the rear facing does not. I'm not a fan of when manufacturers do that. I just kind of would rather have the windows all the way around, but hey, that's just me. Um, it, it makes me want to kind of ask when I see it, like I turned into four non blondes and I'm like, what's going on? I, uh, I spared you the, uh, the, the bad breaking into song right there, but man, trust me, the, the urge was very present. Now they opted for no electric space heating fireplace and instead gave us maximized storage under the entertainment center right here. And if you are sitting at the sofa on a rainy day, this is what you're looking at. Now, if you're reclined in a theater seat, it's not nearly like, oh, wow, that's really, really high. But um, it is up there. We've, I've talked about that three times now. I think you probably get the point. I don't know. I'm still talking about it. Ooh, smart detail. Look right by that kitchen window. You had a set of uh, household outlets over there. Nice little appliance corner. That's a smart place for it. And um, little toe kick under the uh, kitchen counter. You might notice how you can actually like, you know, belly right up to the bar. And uh, it, that really saves a lot of stress on your lower back. If you've never done dishes in an RV, if you are RV shopping, this is a massive pro tip for you. Literally sit on the toilets like I do in my videos to size them up. Literally stand at the sink and pretend you're doing dishes for a minute, extend your arms out. And then after a minute, see if you have any lower back strain. It's incredible how many RVs you'll get, you'll like, you're tired and it's not comfortable. Now you don't have that problem. Um, they are carpetless in the main deck. They are ventless flooring. They are currently carpeted in the slide out. Given the trends I'm seeing in the RV industry, I'll be shocked if Transcend continues that into the next model year, but this is what we have right now. So maybe a little bit of feedback. Um, I, I think I know the answer to this. Do you like the little bit of carpet to keep your toes warm or would you prefer carpetless, easy cleaning? There's no wrong answer to that, but it'll probably be a situation where, you know, majority will end up ruling on that. It will probably cost a couple hundred extra bucks to do it, but it can be done. And, and I, I love that they just include the towel bar over here. So many brands just have a blank wall and they do nothing with it. There's really everyday, functional, smart, thoughtful details that they apply into this that, that make a lot of sense to me. Porcelain foot flush stool. Um, overall, pretty fluffy, friendly. And as you see, you've got that uh, linen pocket. Uh, well, basically, you know, open face linen tower over here. That is what I call the elephant enema style storage where it is deep. And the, the camera's having trouble with that skylight over there. There we go. Uh, it is deep, so if you put stuff in there, make sure you got long arms to reach it. Now, the RV is six and a half foot tall, so my head at a little bit over six foot myself has to be in the skylight. But considering the skylight's centered over that shower, and it's a nice big skylight, I didn't have any problems there. I didn't have any problems there at all. This is something else I really like on Transcends. Like, okay, they gave me the skylight. I'm tall, but my head's in the skylight, but whatever. I can fit without ducking. They also do a true queen bed standard from the factory. Now, the mattress probably isn't much to write home about, as is the case in every stick and tin travel trailer, but at least you could swap it out with anything that you want. Now, over here around the corner, past the sliding pocket privacy door, there is a second entry door, but they maintain maximum privacy. Part of me would kind of like a frosty glass window on that, but when I look at used RVs, I commonly see people cover up the um uh the windows even frosty glass windows on bedroom doors just to block out the light because they like it really dark when they sleep in their bedroom so I, I don't know what do you think is the correct way to go here full uh hanging wardrobe tower the, over there you've got the uh you know usb outlets on both sides of the bed if we take note here you've got bonus dresser drawers on either side of the bed you also have uh easy lift storage under that queen bed i call that kind of like foot locker style storage but i'm not talking um, you know, about the shoe store right there. By the way, I'm always just trying to do different things. Lately here, I've been dabbling with those like three-piece storage views. I, are those okay? Are, do those help you or are they like annoying? Do, please leave me some feedback on that because I don't really care either way. I just want this to be effective footage that, you know, you enjoy watching and you can learn something from. Now, if you remember in our floor plan in a flash, 
Those dinette cushions were plaid. Well, taking a look here, you see that that's, I, I, I didn't jump campers. The cushions are actually reversible. You can roll it over, flip it, and reverse it. And of course, the dinette folds down into an extra little sleeper. Over in the kitchen, though, one thing I do like is below the farm sink, they've got a big space for a wastebasket. And I talk about that stuff all the time because as somebody who actually camps, I can tell you that is a really useful thing to have. And it's baffling to me how many RVs don't have something like that. Um, like, I, I appreciate shelving and I appreciate storage, but there's certain daily functional things. You're going to use a wastebasket literally every single day. I bet you money. I bet if you made a list of 10 things you're going to touch and use in your camper every day, wastebasket's going to be up there. Now we, uh, again, I got you a look at that trifold sleeper sofa. What's kind of cool is when that's open, it, it does not even come close to cutting the camper off. So there's still uh, plenty of room to uh, walk through here. Hold on. I'm sorry. I think I've done you a disservice. We're going to moonwalk backwards here. And then we're going to look almost straight up because I just realized I never actually displayed the fact that you do have uh, the ability to equip this bedroom with a second air conditioner and it is a direct dump air you see the controls are built right on it something else i realized as i'm laying down here this is a weird angle i'm sorry uh tv hookups over here in the bed now normally you'd have a better angle of it than that but i'm not actually laying up in the headboard area of the bed i'm just laying flat at the foot of the bed and now i'm doing my sit-up crunches my fat gut does not like those things i get that shaky belly you know after you do a couple push-up well in my case a couple push-ups and my arms are like <laughs> well that's kind of how my belly feels when i do sit-ups <laughs> this bunk room is brilliant uh, I feel this bunk room is absolutely brilliant. There's awesome window coverage over here. Now, they didn't do a window on the lower bunk because uh, it can be covered by the camp kitchen. So kind of keep that in mind. But the windows that you do have in here, they all open for airflow. Now, there, uh, the, the ceiling lights like in the middle right here, there's just a general light switch for those that uh, as parents, you can just flick and say lights out, kids. But each sleeper zone does have its own individual... Um, uh, light fixture that, you know, that kid, if they want to, can turn on or off. Now, you see, you've got just a basic fan back there, but with, you know, if you got four little kid bodies and they're just little heat machines back here, it's kind of nice that you can keep some of that exhaust. And if you upgrade that to a bigger fan, it could do a heck of a job. Now, there's a handful of power outlets and USB plugs and stuff all over the place. Depending on what you uh, allow, there are some TV hookups back here in the rear room. It is kind of wrapped around the corner. I know it's a weird view and angle that we're looking at right now. But this is a weird bunk room. And I've never gone through one like this. And I don't really know the best way to do it. So I'm sorry if everything is goof stupid on you over here. Um... Let's take a little bit of a, a look at the storage here, starting with those dresser drawers on the bottom left. Now, this is a little bit of a wide angle view just because it is tight quarters, but it's awesome that you've got at least some hanging closet storage here, or considering it's right by the door, that could maybe be a coat closet, depending on what you want to do with it. Oh, by the way, there are uh, at least one. There is a heat vent back here. So I've seen some bunk rooms where manufacturers went, oh, duh, we forgot to put in the heat vent. <laughs> well, you, you don't have that issue here. Once again, looking at the storage, uh, wrapping our way around, we've got uh, quadruple big dresser drawers there to go along with the two small ones. But this is the thing that I think really kind of seals the deal and brings it all together. You've got a half bath kind of buried and nested inside of that uh, uh, L-shaped bunk room in the back. And remember those long bunks tall people can fit. Now, giving you a look here, I was really hopeful for this, but they didn't center the toilet in the room. They shifted it to the right, and I had trouble with right elbow space considering the vast majority of people are right-handed. I know it's a bathroom for little kids, but it doesn't mean that adults might not use it. It just seemed like a little oversight. Now, there might be like a um, uh, a wood joist in the floor, like, you know, running longitudinally. There there might be structure in the floor preventing the toilet from being moving around. I, I don't know that. I'm only estimating based on what I know from general RV construction. Uh, decent counter space here for a little bathroom. Um, and there's no necessarily like medicine cabinet, but... I don't know. I don't know if Lipitor storage is as important for little kids, but maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. Leave me a note. Let me know. In the meantime, I'm going to close up the slide because as big as this is, it's only a one slide camper and check it out in road mode. 
Now, probably not a surprise to a lot of people, that slide will prevent you from just walking straight through the RV. That's one of the only kind of downfalls of this floor plan. But from like the living room door, getting into the kitchen and stuff, and back here into the bunk room is absolutely not a problem. Thankfully, they've got that other door in the bedroom if you wanna complete the road mode access. And there's not a lot of RVs that will allow you to like both bathrooms at the same time, which actually is really nice. Uh, I don't know about you, but a lot of times if like we're close to the destination, you know, and, and like that's when people are like, man, I got to start using the bathroom. But if you're really close, you're like, hold on just a minute. We're going to be there. Well, it's nice to get backed into your site. And while you're worried about getting, you know, your leveling blocks out and stuff, the kids can be back here using the bathroom and, um, in a way, and I don't mean this in a derogatory fashion, it's actually a kind of a handy way to sort of get them out of the way while you're doing the heavy lifting mechanical stuff. Now it's personal and it's subjective, but I personally feel these are some of the best looking stick and tin campers out there right now. Because they don't really look like a stick and tin camper is the thing because they use a different style of corrugated aluminum on the sides. It doesn't have what's called a Mesa crimp, which is what you traditionally see in the RV industry. Um, but that means that it's not quite as like supportive. So what they have to do to compensate for that actually provides a benefit for you. They have to use thicker metal, which also makes this a little more impact and dent scratch resistant, but um, maybe not scratch resistant because that would get into the paint, but you get the idea. Actually, that's an interesting concept. In a big fancy fifth wheel, people pay sometimes over $10,000 for a full body paint package. If you think about it, these RVs are essentially painted already. It's just one of those things that people don't consider. I don't think stick and tin campers get quite the credit they deserve in a lot, a lot of ways. Now, uh, this was one of the first stick and tin brands to include any level of enclosed docking center here. And up top, that is our charge controller for the solar package uh, up on the roof. Now, it's a 25 amp charge controller, and it's a 165 watt roof solar panel at the time of this recording. And I get that those are not necessarily the biggest and most impressive specs, but it is 165 watts and 25 amps of solar package stuff above and beyond what most stick and tin builders are offering factory standard right now. If you wanted to throw a second panel up there, I do believe that charge controller could handle it. Now you've got a black tank flush over there and one of the, the, the things on this RV with having that, uh, that full bath very far forward in the RV and the half bath way back there, um, they just were not able to plumb all the sewer connections into one single stink pickle depository outlet. Uh, so you do have a gray water, or pardon me, a black and gray water outlet in the back, and then you have a um, uh, your black and gray water for the kitchen bathroom uh, up front. So there's just, it was unavoidable. I will say very confidently it was unavoidable because that is one of the things that I've seen Grand Design be very good about uh, not doing whenever it is possible to get away from it. Now also, as long as we're sharing the, uh, the good with the not, Having your hot air exhaust points over here on the campsite of the RV is something that you'll want to be aware of. If you're, uh, if you've never camped before, you're a first time parent, you don't realize this. Like that's your water heater on the left and your furnace on the right. If you're cold camping, you're probably not spending as much time outside huddled under the awning. So the furnace doesn't bother me a terrible amount. The water heater though, you're gonna be using whether it's spring, summer, fall, any time of year. And having that over here on the campsite, you're gonna to wanna to make sure, especially if you got little kids, you teach them not to get near the hot surfaces. Maybe put some kind of warning sticker on there, I don't know. Now, it's kind of funny, because you look at it and you're like, why didn't they make the awning bigger? I, I, don't, I don't know, maybe you don't sound like that, but uh, maybe you're like, why didn't they make the awning bigger? Maybe that's how you sound, I'm not sure. The awning is big. It's just a really big RV is kind of the thing, you know? Um, all that extra length kind of means that you, you can't have like a single 30 foot awning on it necessarily. And it's not quite enough space to have a second awning put on it. You might be able to put like a 10 by 10 easy up screen room in the front there. I'm not sure. Now that's just a little mini camp kitchenette. It is factory standard. If you don't want it though, there's no like factory delete option. But that, that two burner cooktop is basically just a drawer. That slides out with no screws or anything. And the refrigerator just has a couple little brackets screwing it down in place. It could easily be removed. If you just want storage space outside, that's pretty easy to accomplish. Um, now, I, I didn't finish hooking it up, my apologies. Hanging off the license plate bracket is a little garden hose kind of sprayer job that's included with this. And that is really handy, both for a little bit of camp uh, kitchen cleanup as well as like 
hosing the kids' feet off so they don't track a bunch of dirt through the RV. And of course, factory standard with a ladder on the back, which a lot of stick and tin trailers do not do. They might put a bracket up there and say, yeah, you can go get your own ladder. Or you can get one of these where it's just done, son. So again, I ask you, what do you think? I, I'm telling you, there's a couple brands like Transcend, like the FSX division of Salem and Wildwood, that are some of the most creative companies out there. And I get excited because I get so tired of seeing the same thing all day, every day, doing what I do. It's exciting to me to see some different things. Now, uh, remember when you check the links in the video description, Grand Design does not allow us to publish a discounted sale price on our website or uh, here on YouTube even. But the good news, we don't sell for MSRP. We do offer a discounted price. Unfortunately, you do need to contact our team, but you don't need to give us your blood type and social security number. We're not that kind of place. We also don't do hidden dealer fees. So there's that. <laughs> so take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping, everyone.